it's time to stop using LastPass. Let's get into why. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again. And yesterday we came out uh, with a video talking about VPNs, and then we kind of mentioned security and some potential issues with LastPass. Given you guys are interested, obviously, in what's going on with LastPass, we're going to cover that today and some of the issues and potential issues that are arising with LastPass and provide you with some alternatives or ways to search for different alternatives. Hopefully that's, this video will be helpful. And if you guys have any questions or comments or if I missed something, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. But before we get into it, if you guys would like to chat with crypto enthusiasts and other crypto miners in a secure, privately hosted chat platform, be sure to go ahead and hit the join button down below. And then you can head on over to the membership tab, click the down arrow and find the section for connecting on social media. We have it behind a paywall to essentially block scammers spammers and bots as efficiently as possible and it appears to be working at least better than discord so there you go all right so basically last week it broke that lastpass has trackers essentially enabled within their application now that's one of the very few problems that are that is going on but it's definitely a significant issue seeing that the entire point of using a password manager is to protect your security and privacy. So why would you want a password manager that has Google trackers in their Android app? Now this broke, of course, thanks to a security researcher. And here's the original article from the register, at least the original article that I found. And it was German InfoSec Mike Kukax. Kukets. There we go. And he spotted LastPass trackers in an analysis produced by Exodus, which describes itself as a nonprofit led organization by hacktivists whose purpose is to help people get better understanding of the Android application tracking issues. Now we talked about this before. We've talked about the issue with Android in general being owned by Google and the amount of tracking that goes on to it and why I recommend for crypto enthusiasts to lean towards the side of iOS if you are a newbie. Yes, I understand rolling your own kernel, being able to lock it down even more, and there is an argument there. But if you've ever used iOS versus an Android phone, you'll start to notice quite a few things that, that iOS does to protect your security, including prompting you every single time an application requests access to your camera, to your location, to your photos, to your files it will prompt you and let you know when these applications are performing these types of activities so that you can decide whether or not on the OS level to block them. This is why I recommend iOS for newer users. Once again, I understand if you're an Android user and you're very well versed in it, you have ways to track this, monitor this and block it. But if you're not, you need to be aware that pretty much Google's entire operation is to basically gather as much user information off of you as possible. And this is just another example of how, yes, LastPass doesn't appear to have these trackers on the iOS version. This is more of a Google problem than necessarily a LastPass problem, but at the same time, LastPass is putting these trackers in, in an attempt, of course, to basically obtain user data and I would assume that it is most likely to basically be able to sell user data and target you with specific ads or assist Google with targeting you with specific ads. Continuing on, LastPass has many free users. Is it a problem if the owner seeks to monetize them in some way? Kukat says it is, and I agree here. So typically the way trackers like this work is that the developer which this does go on to LastPass, compiles code from tracking providers into their application. The gathered information can be used to, once again, build up a profile of the user's interest from their activities and target them with ads. 
Even the app developers do not know what data is collected and transmitted to the third party provider, said Kuketz. And the integration of proprietary code could introduce security risks and unexpected behavior as well as being a privacy risk. These things do not belong in password managers, which are security critical, he said. All right, this is a big one. So what we need to do here is give you guys alternatives as well as a possible way to go ahead and at least reduce the possibility of the trackers being active in LastPass. They do have a button. I don't know at this point if this button is just there to put your mind at ease or if it actually does function. You can only do it through the web portal. We're also gonna talk about the problem with web portals and using a password manager that leverages them as opposed to a desktop application here too. But if you guys are worried about it and you're currently using LastPass, you aren't ready to migrate off of it, I created a dummy account here to go through this. So what you wanna do is go into your LastPass account and click down on the username and click account settings. In account settings, you wanna click show advanced settings and you wanna scroll down until you find privacy. You wanna uncheck, keep track of login and form fill history, and you want to uncheck send anonymous error reporting data to help improve LastPass. Now, the tracking of login and form fill history, you could in theory keep it enabled. I actually have it disabled in all of my browsers. I, I, I also do YouTube, um, and I have noticed in the past, the problem with those is, you know, I go into uh, a form to fill out and it starts trying to autofill with data that I don't want, you know, the whole entire YouTube world to see. So I turn those off no matter what. Now, in theory, unchecking the send anonymous error reporting data doesn't actually stop the trackers from sending, even though this is what LastPass said to do in order to stop that. Now, I can't confirm this. I will keep an eye on it. I'll probably tweet it out. Maybe we'll make another video on it. If you think we should make another video on it, let me know. If you guys have more detail that has come out, let me know as well in the comment section, or at least on Twitter would be easier, at Son of a Tech. That way I can help keep track of it and we can let everybody know, because really we have to work together against these types of things. So, what are your alternatives, okay? And this is going to be important. First of all, they have not found this in 1Password or anything like that. They've only found it in LastPass. So, obviously LastPass is going to take the brunt of this and hopefully with enough negative press, none of the other password managers will do this. But what's another huge issue with LastPass? Well, they don't store your passwords on your device. What that means is all of your passwords, yes, they're encrypted, but they are in the cloud. And you need to keep that in mind because that means your passwords are accessible 24 seven. I've always recommended that if you're going to be keeping user information and data that you wanna keep private on any sort of devices, that you shut it down when you're not using that device. And in the case of a cell phone, I recommend getting a, an alarm clock and turning off your cell phone at night as well keeping in mind that they also are still active while they're sleeping in most cases. And the more paranoid you get, the more you can do, Faraday cages, whatever. But it is best practice to shut down any devices that have personal information on them. The other thing is, is when you're looking at a password manager, I highly recommend finding something that actually keeps all of the password information on a local device. And you'll wanna do one more thing along with that to ensure that you have control over your passwords and that they are being maintained safely. But 
I pulled up NordPass here, which is a newer option. And one of the things that I just wanted to show you guys when I'm looking at a password manager, one of the things I always ask is, does Nord, NordPass, for example, or does whatever password manager save passwords on their servers? Here we have a frequently asked question on NordPass, and they state our service is backed by a zero knowledge architecture. Yay, zero knowledge architecture, meaning that your data is encrypted and decrypted at your device level, key words, at your device level, okay? This is not in the cloud, it's not in their servers, it is at the device's level. What you'll notice though too, and we'll talk about here in a second, is how does that sync across different devices. But all data that you store in your vault is already encrypted and you only know the details and you only know the details just you all right there we go your master password encryption and decryption keys never reach out to our servers and this is the key reason why we do not provide an automated master password recovery via email so we've talked about this before a lot of people are always like oh it's private keys is it, it, it it blocks the, you know, the, it adds a barrier to entry to cryptocurrency for its users. Yes, because cryptocurrency by nature is based around your own personal financial responsibility. NordPass is based around your own personal security responsibility. Okay. It's up to you and yes, that does mean you are responsible for keeping all of your information but it also means you aren't relying on somebody else to not leak your information. All right. I'm just like, it gets very stressful when people come up with these arguments because yeah, sure. Cool. LastPass has a master password. You can go there and get in anytime. So can anybody else. All right. So these are the things I look for in a password manager. And I just used NordPass as an example. I do not have an affiliate link. I am not affiliated at all. It just had the easiest frequently asked questions to provide this for you. Now there is typically a sync option and you can go over this and figure it out. If you need a guide on, of course, how NordPass works. Uh, NordLocker is another thing that I've mentioned before. These new services from Nord have been pretty awesome because of their on device, at device level options here. So finally, the thing is, is most of y'all probably use a desktop in general, right? If you're watching this channel, my assumption is that you guys, for the most part, are utilizing, of course, like a desktop PC with Windows 10 or something of the likes maybe Linux, but very few of you from what I see in my analytics are you actually using Linux as much as you guys like to be vocal about using Linux. It does appear that not as many of you use it as you would like to think. Um, and we can go over that in another video as well. I just find it entertaining. But if you're using Windows 10 and you've custom built a PC, the one thing that you probably forgot to do was get a TPM module. Now a TPM module allows you to enable BitLocker. And with Windows 10, the easiest way to encrypt your device is BitLocker. Now for the purpose of, of course, making this as simple for all users as possible, I want to just basically use BitLocker as an example. And we can go over other encryption methods in a future video, but if you're going to be storing your passwords at the device level, you also want to encrypt that device, the hard drive, all the data on it, along with, of course, the encryption that's built into the software. So that's just an extra step you can take. What I've done, and I'll put a link down below, is if you're on a regular desktop, go to Amazon and look up the TPM module for your motherboard. We'll just have a general search for TPM modules here. As you can see, this is kind of what they look like. There are different ones, even within brand manufacturers, including Asus and ASRock, for example. I know because I've ordered the wrong TPM module for ASRock motherboards in the past and Asus motherboards, but you wanna just make sure that it has the same compatibility with the motherboard you want. You want to install the TPM module and you want to activate it in your BIOS. And then you want to enable BitLocker, a quick Cortana search, which I don't recommend using Cortana, but you know, a quick Cortana search will allow you to open up your BitLocker just like that. And then click the turn on button 
and it will encrypt the device. You can turn on BitLocker without a TPM module, but I would highly recommend having a module. So what did we learn today? If you are dealing with security and privacy, what? At the device level. There we go. And then if it's at the device level, you should go ahead and take even further steps to make sure that your data is encrypted on that device as well. These are very simple steps you can take in the direction of securing your data. And I would not recommend using LastPass now, even if you are going to use one that saves your passwords in the cloud, LastPass would be basically the last resort. So ditch LastPass, and if you guys need a video on how to ditch LastPass, let me know in the comment section below. We can do a tutorial, and we'll get into it later. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.